Okay, well, we're gonna discuss um, a very important part of um, QuickBooks Online, and that is um, QuickBooks um, Bank Reconciliation. It's very important that at the close of your business day, you would, um, business day, or probably at the close of the mo uh, month, which is which is common among um, businesses around the world, you want to reconcile your balances with your bank bus statements so that when you are looking at your figures in quickbooks you are always rest assured, you are always rest assured that that's exactly what you have in the bank so that you don't make business decisions with figures that is different from what you have in the bank and all that so at the end of the month you, it's always advisable for you to reconcile these balances and um, put them at par so how are we going to do that in quickbooks online that's exactly what i'm going to share here now to do your reconciliation in quickbooks you go to your company well, I hope your company name will be here when you set up your own company. Then you come there, you click reconcile. When you click reconcile, it takes you to a window. Now we know ordinarily that if you hold other things constant, there are key things that will definitely make your bank balance to be different from your QuickBook balance. Whether you don't carry out any transaction at all. Number one, we know your bank will always charge you for the services we're in that. Number one, number two, is that there might be an interest income on your account for leaving your money in the bank for a particular period your, uh, your 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 cash could actually earn you certain interest and all that so those are the two basic reasons your balances will always be different even though you do not carry out any transactions at all so to do reconciliation in quickbooks you have to select the bank you want to do now mind you the procedure here is also the same thing as the one you do when you are reconciling your credit card transaction or your mastercard so they are not different so here you come in you select your bank then you click reconcile now when you click reconcile now a window will pop up now what this is expecting you to do is for you to key in the transactions and all that so here we have the bank we're reconciling then we have the statement ending date the statement ending date has to be at the end of the month so here you come in you select um 30th of october as you know we're doing it in october then you have a beginning balance here the beginning balance here is the balance on this zenith bank when you add a bank at the end of the at the beginning of the period now there is always a field that asks you to enter the bank balance so that is what this balance is all about now to enter your ending balance your ending balance has to be what you have in the bank so here assuming our ending balance is one two nine nine zero 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 and all that so this is what we have in the bank why this is what we have in quickbooks they are very very different now the beginning balance here is what you have in quickbooks that is when you're setting up this or at the beginning of the month then the ending balance here is what you have at the bank so not the one in quickbooks because the system is going to match up what you have in the bank with what you have in quickbooks and all that so because if you enter the one you have in quickbooks here you're not doing it right so it's important for you to add what you have in the bank as your ending balance so here you will not check your bank statement because i assume that you've already requested for your bank statement either via online email or probably you log into your account or your banking portal to need to check your transaction so you look at the period in the period of september which is what we're doing the consultation was there any service charge did the bank charge it for any service if there is you enter the amounts here now when the bank charges you you now select the date they charge you oh on the 14th they charged me for this particular service probably issuing a checkbook or whatever services they might have rendered now this particular charge is an expense to you so which means you should go to an expense account so already we have your bank charge here so you select and leave it like that then the next one here is interest end now you check your, your bank account again here mind you we're actually using our bank statement so you check was there any interest end for that particular period oh we have an interest end of 12.34 that means the bank actually credited us with this particular amount and all that so here you look at the period oh on the 12th so you, this particular date here has to be from your bank statement i'm only using this for the purpose of illustration so when you actually end an interest it's an income to you so here you have to track that as an interest income account so these two transactions are going to your profit and loss 
this will go to your p, your p and a at the income section while this will go to the p and a at the expense section once you're done you click ok here so we're, uh, we're waiting for you to load now when you click you click ok this is what comes up in the system now if you look at this now you realize that we have differences we have our cleared balance and we have our statement ending balance your cleared balance is what you have in quickbooks your statement ending balance is what you have in the bank you know this is the reason i explain why you have to enter the one in the bank because if you have entered the one in quickbooks as the system will catch that as zero and you're wrong so the statement ending balance is one two nine 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 which is this particular one that's one million two hundred ninety nine thousand which is what you have in the bank why the cleared balance is what you have in quickbooks so different between your end balance which is what you have in the bank and what you have in quickbooks is what we are actually looking for here so you will now trace down and look oh from this particular check in payment you check your bank and see was there any payment you made from this particular bank that you didn't track if there is any you take it which is what we have ticked here then you come down to your deposit again was there any credit transfer made into your account that you didn't capture you come here you tick such kind of transfer you know that. so what ticking does is that you're telling quickbooks that yes i have captured it into the system so ticking that will change your balance automatically you can see what is happening here so then you will now come down to quickbooks and ask yourself was there any payment i made that i was has not been captured in my bank statement if there is any you have to go back to your right check and make such payments so here you're looking at all the payments you've made in quickbooks that you have to capture in bank probably you might have given a client a check or probably a vendor a check and it's yet to be presented to the bank that will definitely cause discrepancy here so you also come down to this section and say oh was there any income that i've received and it's yet to be created to the bank like probably like uncreated check oh we received the check we've actually entered into the system and we are asking the bank to help us to clear the check and it's not actually cleared into our bank account so it will definitely make the quickbook balance to be higher than the bank balance so once we're finished with all this transaction you click finish now so when you click finish now that should be able to help you with consign but because we only work with a teacher's figure and only figure so we are not really expecting our account to balance but something is very important to note here you have to be able to understand the step involved like i said the first thing you need to do is to be able to track your service charge and your interest ends then the next is to be able to track all the check payments you've done they have not captured into your bank statement all the deposits you've actually made they have not captured into your bank statement then you also check your bank statement and see which transactions are already been captured and are not in your quickbooks example of another transaction could be standing order you give your bank instructions to pay a particular vendor they've done that but you're yet to record that into the system so there are so many things that could make your bank statement to be different from the quickbook balance here so you have to be able to capture that very important so when we go further again to reconcile now now on this section of reconciliation we are actually looking at the credit side that's the credit card reconciliation so you come here you click your account as we were reconciling our mastercard you come and you select your mastercard then you click reconcile now when you click reconcile now we are waiting for you to load so you could see here under the mastercard so here you select your statement ending date and the 30th now the balance here like i said before has to be the balance you have in the bank not with quiz so, so when you see statement ending balance that is what you have in the bank you come in you click ok when you click ok here so you could see these are all your mastercard transactions these are all the charges and cash in advance then these are all the payments so you now begin to compare your mastercard transaction that the bank who is actually issuing the mastercard with the one you've recorded in the quickbooks so if there's any that you capture like example when you make payment for all these particular expenses here and it's being captured there all you need to be doing is to tick as you're ticking you realize that these balances will be changing as you're ticking here so ticking here you notice that the balances here will change 
now we will now have the statement ending date and declared balance the statement ending balance is the one you have at the bank that means what your bank is saying you have at your mastercard balance then the declared balance is what you have in quickbooks once you've done capturing everything you click finish now so the procedure for reconciling your bank account it's not that difficult it's not it's not different from the one you follow when you are reconciling your master card they're yeah, almost the same thing so you could subscribe for our youtube channel or drop your query if you have any question and we are always willing to answer thank you